Hello, everyone, and welcome to Boxed One Year Later. Last year, in April of 2020, we had the idea of Boxed, the now global hit digital dance series. It said Boxed, Dance Deletes Distancing. Because 12, 13 months ago, the whole world was in a similar position. We were all locked in our homes, apartments, studio, wherever we were. We were in quarantine and we didn't even have access to the kind of basic lighting equipment or stands, nothing. This lockdown came upon India overnight, but we joined the world. Well, we thought that we wouldn't be talking to you about being boxed one year later, but here we are. Maybe the whole world is not in the same position in, at this very time, but India is going through a really grim time. And so are many of the dancers who featured in Boxed. So we thought, why not get in touch with our dancers and take a little checklist of how they've been doing since they participated in this brilliant dance adventure. For all of you who watched Box and who loved it, just a quick reminder, we reached out to dancers across several genres. We asked them for two minutes in their chosen position of lockdown within their homes and to take the same work from two camera angles. And that would be edited and that would be boxed. Well, today we're in conversation with three of the artists. We have Kirti Kumar from Bangalore, Sharanya Chandran, from Delhi and Surjit from Imphal in Manipur. We begin with the man on the beanbag. In the midst of the lockdowns, I found myself lost and listless with abundant time in hand. Event cancellations led to a feeling of inertia as I took solace in a new found friend, my beanbag. Vegetating, sleeping, wandering, slouched in this comfort zone, unable to leave it. Between phases of productivity, ideas to explore, I kept getting pulled back to my beanbag until I realized that it was not a place of comfort, but a place of hiding, of denial, a baggage that I had to let go of. This is reflected in my piece on we, to be or not to be. Hello, Mr. Beanbag Man. How are you, Kirti? 
Namaste, Didi. <laughs> okay, I I know that um, you were also an editor you, on the team of Boxed, and finally, when we said Kiti, you have to do something, you decided on the beanbag, right? So, yes. watching that clip, tell me what are the thoughts that are going through your head, and how many more hundred hours have you spent on that beanbag? So, first of all, Didi, uh, watching this, uh, you know, piece after a long time now. Uh, so thank you first of all that you know i got to watch this uh, uh, little piece in this context uh, so, so many lovely memories come back to me one the, the real fact is that i was stuck to the bean bag for a very long time uh, for the you know for the first part initial part of the lockdown in fact most of the edits of box also happened with me sitting on the bean bag <laughs> <laughs> so so like you said now i did spend several hours on the bean bag Uh, of course, the that's how this piece also sort of got conceptualized. Uh, it was it was all put together, and uh, going further, after Bob's, I did put myself out of the bean bag. Uh, there is a lot more work that happened from there on till till now. So I, I'm excited to uh, speak to you about all of that as well. Yeah, because I think after Bob's, you became somewhat of a tech guru for so many people who were trying to sort of understand how to. Deal with the digital. You were, you took a lot of courses. You taught a lot of online courses. Uh, yes, Eddie. So that was also I realized that around the time, um, so many artists in our country were struggling, you know, to cope up with this sudden change that happened in their lives, in their artistic lives, in the way they were they had to create work, showcase work, and also to teach their students. And uh, having uh, done a lot of uh, work myself on the technical side, even before the lockdown. I thought this was, uh, you know, only right on my part to reach out and you know, do my bit to the artist community, uh, share whatever little that I knew that I sort of gathered over the years, and also th through the initial part of the lockdown. Also, thankfully, uh, you know, for me, one event re really gave me a lot of insights into this uh, whole uh, technical sphere. That was uh, Dr. Maya Rao conference uh, that the Nata Institute of Kathak and Choreography conducted last year. Uh, the entire festival, uh, the conference was held online. and when we decided when we started talking about it uh, i had to research quite a bit about putting up a almost a flawless uh, conference online running it online we had not done that before so uh, it was a lot it was a big learning curve and through that experience i realized that how tough it is for 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 an artist to just come on board and do something online so i put that experience and also uh, you know the experience of having worked with several other technicians artists collaborators over the years and thought i should put them together as a module uh, which which might you know really help artists to see how they can onboard themselves onto these platforms uh, so with with this uh, i put together a two hour module one for the beginners and then one for the the next level i, I called it the intermediate session uh, so i conducted these sessions for uh, uh, you know art uh, for, on platforms such as india foundation for the art the ncp in mumbai and several other uh, uh, dance and music institutions where students and also other artists joined in and uh, it it was a lovely interaction i got to you know uh, i can very happily and proudly say that i was able to reach out to close to 3 and a half 4000 artists across the country through these uh, you know interactions that's fantastic and i know that over this last 12 13 months the quality of digital programming has certainly improved and a lot of dancers have really gotten to get acquainted with some basics uh and some of some of you are really really very tech savvy but kitty something that many people did not know is that you have actually reconnected with your family business of food and right now during this very difficult time of covid you're actually working on that part of your that avatar of your life just tell us about what you're doing with your family business and food so sure. yes didi so um uh, i i come from a family uh, where uh, you know my grandfather started uh, this the food business it is called love luck and co on a, on sampi road in maleshwaram in bangalore it's it's an important road uh, in our locality and uh, this shop was set up back in 1955 by my grandfather and later it was run by my uh, by my parents and uh, since 2013 i have been running this online portal of the same business and it's called lovelockfood.com and last year uh, you know we all know that uh, not much work happened Uh, on the artistic side and i found myself with a lot of time on hand you know after getting off the bean bag i think this is one of the major projects that i got into as well um me along with my uh, brother my cousin uh, the four of us basically got together my wife rupa 
my cousin Kaushik, his wife Ashwini, and I. The four of us got together and we uh, took over the brand, the business from my parents. And we thought we should, you know, uh, make it make it a bigger entity, reach out to more people. Uh, we, uh, you know, restructured our uh, web portal and we introduced a few more uh, products into it, uh, into our line of business. Th- that's been, uh, you know, going well. That is one of the things that we did. Also. We set up a. We just consolidated our entire production unit. We set up a new production unit for the thing, and uh, particularly the last one month has been very satisfying for us. Uh, in, in the second wave, in this lockdown right now, uh, it, we all know that Karnataka is uh, facing, uh, you know, a very very uh, bad situation with respect to COVID second wave. Uh, we have one of the highest number of uh, cases here, especially in Bangalore, and there is a severe lockdown also in place right now as we are speaking. The last one month, we started an initiative called Shema Bojana, where uh, we've uh, we've been uh, giving packed lunch, packed meal boxes for lunch to COVID frontline workers across the city in North Bangalore. Uh, so we are uh, now sending out these packages to uh, a couple of hospitals for the medical staff who are working in the COVID centers there. Uh, also, the BBMP uh, control room, the uh, the COVID war room, uh, and uh, almost four to five police stations. Who are manning the barricades and ensuring that people are staying inside? And these are people who are always on the road, who are out there, and they needed uh, uh, food in in uh, in boxes, the, so that they can easily eat and you know dispose them off. So this is something that we have been doing as well as part of the business. Uh, well, food has been a huge presence during the entire lockdown. It's been a go-to place for comfort food, and I think what you're doing through your family business is really commendable. So you have tech, you have dance, and now you have food. So Kirti, I think you have a full portfolio right there. Um, you managed to stay safe and not fall ill. I want you to please continue to stay safe. Thank you for your presence as an editor for Box and your online presence of the Beanbag performance. And I know we're going to stay con- connected and have more conversations. But for now, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Dee. Thank you so much. Namaste. Next, we have Bharatanatyam dancer Sharanya Chandran from New Delhi. When we reached out and asked Sharanya to create her two-minute boxed adventure, she finally decided on the place in her home, her parents' home, that she had taken for granted all her life. Watch the video. Bedroom, which is my current workstation for the lockdown, and the dance space. 
uh, through my piece, I've tried to mirror what this lockdown has done to me at a personal level. Uh, where in the beginning it was all about physically being restricted and constricted, trying to go here, there, unsuccessfully of course. Um, you know, which then led to this mental churn and a cocktail of emotions, uh, you know, fear of COVID of course, uh, but equally compassion for the migrants as well as victims, uh, etc. And, um, you know, being boxed into the screen, which is the new work world. And finally, I think, and this is the phase I am in now, uh, a, a realization and going within and exploring different dimensions, uh, depth as opposed to spread, and um, you know, valuing every inch of space and existing relationships, a landing really. Hi, Sharanya, welcome. Hi, Anita ji, how are you? So tell me, watching that video, you must be having lots of memories that come flooding back. Absolutely. And I remember you telling me that you chose that landing because it was between the room that you grew up in and the dance class and that you had just sort of used it for so many times but never really thought about it as a possible location right so now tell me about the making of your video how many family members were enrolled in in this this is supposed to be a secret but okay i'm happy to reveal this uh, i think this was a really uh, uh, exciting process for us because uh, you know it was the beginning months of the lockdown and we were kind of still making sense with this whole uh, moving dance to the virtual format sort of a model so this opportunity was really exciting on multiple levels one is uh, on on the you know on the lighter note on the tech aspect it was three people in my family who were enlisted to do the video and they were just using their own mobile because uh, we were sort of still getting used to this whole uh, pivot to virtual, uh, uh, you know, performance formats. And, and so it was my husband and my parents who were holding three cameras because I think uh, the brief was to hold, uh, you know, have three angles, one straight and one on either side. So those were the three people at home and those were the three people who were <laughs> commissioned by me to do this. <laughs> and they very uh, politely accepted it. But I think on a more serious note, um, it's, it's when I was going through this, it's kind of appalling uh, to see that, uh, you know, we are still in the same situation more than one year uh, post boxed. So it's, it's, it's really, we thought, I, I thought that we would uh, get out of this sooner. And I think all of us were optimistic. And especially since we saw uh, the light at the end of the tunnel with the reducing stats. And so, and again, to be uh, caught unawares uh, in the second wave and a much worse wave. Uh, so being boxed and then being unboxed and uh, and again being boxed. So I think this second uh, boxed uh, phase has been harder to deal with because we also had that interim relief, so to say, in some sense, where we were also, you know, having this hybrid of uh, in-person classes and virtual, you know, of course, uh, uh, adhering to all the uh, safety guidelines and physical distancing guidelines uh, that, to the extent possible. But we were going by the numbers, right? Like it was a genuine fall of numbers. And so I think one thing that this this whole year has taught me is how to be flexible and to pivot based on the situation uh, and and sort of i think that's one thing that dancers have really learned over the past year uh, but i think when i was watching this uh, 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 you know this this choreography of boxed uh, at that time, it was just sort of, I wanted to just bring out everything that I was feeling. Uh, um, and and uh, this, this opportunity gave me that space to really articulate through a creative process, all that was going on uh, physically, but also, uh, you know, mentally out there and bring these two things together. So, uh, you know, as, as you could see, uh, it was all about right in the beginning, it was very like, you know, making sense of this mobility restrictions. You want to go here, you want to go there, uh, but you're not able to. So at, at a very, uh, you know, uh, at that level, it was th that restriction, but but reconciling uh, with that. But at a deeper level, uh, I think it was also exploring different dimensions. So going mm. within, uh, and if I contextualize this with dance, I think, you know, it's not only about performances and travel and tours all the time, but like really, um, what is the process of it? So I think a lot of time this year, I've also spent in, uh, you know, Going back to the basics, uh, uh, you know, whether it is the other woes, better, whether it is better, uh, bettering my own, uh, you know, even uh, 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 my my cross training, uh, going back to some of the basics, which we kind of took for granted and just ran with it, looking for the next 
uh, opportunity and just sort of like not really thinking and spending some time really making sense of all of this uh, and and thinking a bit more on the process aspects. I spent a lot more time, got the opportunity to spend a lot more time with my mother and guru. Uh, uh, and so that has also been a really great process of expanding the repertoire, but also then going with it, uh, deeper within. Uh, and, and I think uh, it's been fascinating to see how uh, dance has pivoted uh, uh, and dancers have pivoted right from the beginning. I think it was all a question of, you know, Insta Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, everybody wanting to, you know, furiously put out content out there. And then there was this webinars phase and then there was uh, you know, all the live performances uh, sort of a phase. And I think some of these opportunities boxed or even Andal's garden, I think they created a special space um, in, in terms of getting dancers to think and not just sort of present whatever they knew and just record that, but thinking uh, of what, you know, A, a uh, what they were going through, but B also uh, how to uh, package content for the camera, which is a bit different. And I think we are all learning as we go. We yes. are a, a bit better at this. Uh, I think one year post boxed, but I think these have been some of the learnings, uh, which has been quite exciting. Sharon, yeah, you were very, very lucky because you were able to travel to Kajiraho. You performed at the Kajiraho Festival during that little window that we had, Jan, Feb, early March. And then you also were at the India 75, the Purana Kila event. So you are one of the few lucky dancers who were able to experience the live in that little open window before you know, everything shut down again. But you uh, post-boxed, I mean, or before boxed, you are a new mother. I mean, you 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 had a two-year-old to deal with who's staying home and uh, whatever online virtual learning. I mean, that must have all, that must be also taking a lot of your time, uh, you know. Yeah. So, so, so I divide time between dance, uh, my uh, passion for development. So I'm a trained economist and in that space, I work for JPAL, uh, you know, bringing research and policy together uh, for evidence-based decision-making. And I have a two-year-old uh, uh, and it has been really challenging because, uh, you know, you hear that zero to three is the critical phase of early childhood development. And uh, how do you channelize this uh, life uh, when there is no social interaction in the, yes. with the broader world, right? So I think, um, in, in the beginning, I was very wary of uh, 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 all of these online uh, preschool formats, but then uh, I was like, it's this or nothing. Uh, yeah. So what, what, what else am I able to give in a sustained manner in terms of content and you know thinking of new activities, play-based learning. So I have now adapted uh, to that, just the way we have adapted to Zoom classes in Natya Riksha. Uh, so I think that uh, online adaptation of pedagogy uh, has really seen a leap over the past year. And it seems like this is going to be there to stay because I don't think uh, things are going to open for at least early uh, childhood sort of uh, pre-nursery uh, anytime soon. Sharanya, after Boxed, you got COVID. And, um, and of course, we're so happy you got out of it. But uh, tell me your, uh, how your family is doing. They're all fine. Thank you so much uh, uh, for, you know, but but I, I'd like to tell you, uh, we contracted it as a family. So nine of us got it and it was like nine, you know, nine I... of us. And it was so my in-laws, my parents, everybody got it uh, in the family, including my son. And it was like a pack of cards falling one after the other. So after every two days, two days, two days, fever, all those symptoms kind of uh, uh, were there. But I think we were lucky because we could all manage it as a whole instead of quarantining in, um, you know, in, in specific rooms. But uh, I think we were extremely lucky because this was, I think, just after boxed last year, last June, that we all contracted uh, COVID. Some of us had really bad symptoms but the others uh, were okay. Uh, and, and I think, you know, I think this whole thing about uh, uh, helping each other out and these traditional remedies really helped. And one thing that I felt was there was a lot of misinformation about COVID uh, at that mm -hmm. time. Now I think because with, with the whole uh, community transmission of the disease, uh, there's a lot more information that people have and there are papers that have been written uh, even globally. But I think at that time, in the initial months of the lockdown uh, and as a dancer, I think I felt responsible uh, to, you know, really uh, share our experience more openly and, you know, get, out, get over the stigma that uh, was attached to those who uh, contracted the virus. Uh, and I think uh, we tried our best to do that. Yeah, I know because of the misinformation and the paranoia and many superstitions. I know that I've inherited two street dogs that have been adopted because their owners thought that animals will give you COVID. So, 
uh, so many pets were just thrown out onto the street. But yes, I think we have more knowledge now, but we're in a tougher position now in India. And uh, you're right. I mean, one year later, we are still boxed. We're still talking to each other on these Zoom squares. But Sharanya, thank you so much. I know you're juggling many balls in the air, and but you represent... Uh, you know, the younger generation was able to do it and uh, take care of yourself and, uh, you, so you know, uh, and stay creative. Thank you so much. Our third featured artist for this edition is Surjit from Imphal. Now, he's an artist I've always been very intrigued about. I've caught snatches of his performance. I've heard about him, didn't watch much online, but one of our back end team suggested why don't we contact Surjit and we did and my god he came up with I would say a really political psychological kind of a two minute because he expressed what many of us uh, were really feeling inside uh, during the early year early period of our lockdown in box last year now watch Surjit's film Footsteps is a video film that I shot at the staircase of our house. Stairs is a space we used to go up and down. Similarly, our life is also a recurring journey of ups and downs. In this pandemic, people are isolated from one another and surely undergoing their own ups and downs. I wanted to challenge myself to go beyond my normal way of walking up and down to the stairs. I wanted to see how I adjust my body in this isolated space and in the process figuring out various ways to travel or go on with adjustment. It is not easy but we humans have been facing many disasters. However, we existed learning new ways to sustain our hope and life. Welcome, Surjit, and thank you for joining us from, from Manipur, from Imphal. You know, I'll tell you when I first received the film that you had submitted for Box, which you yourself edited also, I felt that this was so perfect because you choosing the stairs, walking up and down and back and forth, and then sliding down and going backwards, it was like all the frustration and the tension that all of us were feeling a year ago, you know, uh, with the confusion and the doubt and maybe paranoia. So first, how do you feel now that you're watching this film, uh, maybe a whole year later, 
what are your thoughts? Thank you again, uh, Bob, and uh, again to Anita Ratnam, Didi. And uh, yeah, it's quite crazy that after one year, after watching this movie again, it's triggered me against that, uh, you know, we are still in this phase, like uh, coming, uh, staring, going up and down. And life is like that. And as I said last time also, life is, you know, never ending, it's a war. So we are warrior, human are warrior. And uh, we have to play this game. And, but this is the, uh, one of the major uh, war. It is like a second world war is happening around this war with the nature. And this is the, uh, one of the big battle for us, for the human being. So we uh, still, as I said, you know, the stare, the stare is still going up and we have to find uh, different angles to go away. Uh, you know, the, 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 the different stare our, from our life. So that is what I thought, uh, you know, during these years, uh, uh, you know, within this period of one years. Surjit, you have actors who work with you. Um, how have you kept them motivated? I did see a couple of online, uh, um, you know, sessions that you had done for other, for other producers, but how have you managed to motivate your actors and your dancers through this, you know, very difficult period of one year? Uh, as I, uh, I, I try to like, uh, try to do myself first, like uh, if I, uh, to do regular exercise or to just, uh, you know, send videos online, you know, never stop like a workout, uh, you know, it's not about matter of COVID-19, but as a dancer, as a human being, we should not stop uh, physical exercise. Uh, that is the one of the important thing for our life. Uh, this is uh, one of the research says, all, uh, those who don't have a brain, they don't move, but we have a brain, so we have to move. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, things to activate our brain. So we have to move so that we can have a fresh mind. Uh, that's why I always increase, uh, increase my dancer to, to do something small videos on my you know, on my, on my pace, even though it's nothing about, uh, you know, team or whatever, just do a physical exercise wherever you can in this small area or, you know, that's, that's what I try to do. Even now also, uh, I try to focus on myself. That is what I do now is, uh, you know, I don't think about what to create. Uh, I don't think about what is the next project. For me now, I always, uh, I'm considering now is to do physical exercise every day and get ready for the next after the COVID is over. And that's what I'm doing. Well, I saw you in Bird, which was yeah. a quartet of choreographies. And it was a beautiful, very, very, very compelling work, you know, online. And I'm hoping that um, I couldn't watch it in person because that very day, I was running a light fever and I was very worried that uh, I was ge getting into something so I couldn't come and watch the performance, but I watched it online and I'm looking forward to Bird once again touring India. But are you working on anything else right now? Any other kind of digital project? Uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I've been, uh, it was so great that I came in Chennai during this period of February that everybody was like, oh, well, it's time now and we are, you know, we can go out, we can fly again, our bird, our wings, you know. And so I came and fly and came uh, to Chennai and we really did a very well and well received. And uh, we had a very good time seeing all the performers again, like Deepa, Joshua and Pretty Atari, of course. Um, and Vikram. Really had, and Vikram, yeah. yes. Vikram yes, and, yeah. yeah. Yes. So we really had a good time. Uh, we had so positive thinking that, okay, now it's time the, the, we have to fly again. Uh, so uh, we, we really had a good time. And, and now uh, we have, I, we're supposed to be in Bangalore in this May, but again, you know, something happens. The second wave came. And uh, we said, okay, it's now time again to rest, hybrid, hibernate again, and, uh, and let's see what we go on. And uh, after the, uh, you know, I, uh, after this, uh, the project we did uh, for the box, I did a, one of the film is called Samnaba, Mars. Uh, it's commissioned, uh, kind of commissioned by uh, Serendipity Art Foundation. 
So yes. we did a, we did the primary show in December for the festival. So we had a very good, uh, uh, you know, we had a very good time for that, and we had a very good feedback for this film also. Right now, uh, uh, the project, uh, as I said, I, I we are planning. We've been planning and we've been failed because of we cannot actually plan it right now because the world is like so much chaos. So you can, you know, but uh, we never stop thinking uh, for the future. Uh, so we have some particularly project uh, planning for the, uh, you know, some collaboration work with the, some uh, artists, uh, but uh, we, I don't want to share it now because it's not yet confirmed. So, you know, it's all, you know, but we still, we still have having yes. a hope. Yeah. And you and I have some unfinished business as well. So yes. I'm, ho I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we can begin something because at this time, as I'm talking to you and talking to the other artists, you know, we are in such extreme lockdown here in in Tamil Nadu, and um, this just talking about box reaching out to all of you who I haven't spoken to or even seen on the screen for so many months this brings back some really nice memories so yes. stay safe and I hope that we can talk and uh, meet in person very soon yeah yeah thank you thank you Anita Ratnam Didi and thank, thank you. you all to the team for coming back again and hoping to see you soon yeah so that brings us to the end of this edition of Boxed One Year Later. You watched the three videos that were created 12 months ago and you listened to the artists now, how they're feeling, how their year has been, what they are thinking about and what they are hoping for. In the coming weeks, we will bring you more of these editions, talking to more of the Boxed artists and bringing you up to date about what they have all been up to. Thank you all for watching. Join us next time.